Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to have a discussion on the topic of GLP-1 receptor agonists. Now these are the drugs that are used for the treatment of diabetes mellitus. This will be a very interesting video. Please stay with us till the end. We will be covering our uh, discussion under the following points. Let us take one heading at a time. To begin with, let us understand what do we mean by GLP-1. Now GLP-1, it means glucagon-like peptide 1. This GLP-1, it is a 30 or 31 amino acid long peptide hormone. Both GLP-1 as well as glucagon, they are derived from pre-proglucagon. And this GLP-1, it is secreted by the enteroendocrine L cells which are located in the distal intestine on the alpha cells of the pancreas as well as by the central nervous system. Now the native GLP-1 or the GLP-1 that is already present within our body that is rapidly inactivated by the enzyme DPP-4 as well as the plasma T half of the of native GLP-1 it is 1 to 2 minutes. Now because of these two reasons that is it since it is degraded by the enzyme DPP-4 as well as a very low plasma half-life that is why endogenous peptide is not a very useful therapeutic agent. This is a very important point please remember the students that why we cannot use native GLP-1 or the endogenous GLP-1 as a therapeutic agent. And please remember that GLP-1 induces the insulin release only at high glucose concentration. That is when the glucose concentration will be high only then GLP-1 will be released. This is also a very very important point regarding GLP-1. Now what is the action of GLP-1? When GLP-1 is given intravenously to diabetic subjects or rather to diabetic patients in high amounts, then what is going to happen is that firstly it will stimulate the insulin secretion. This is the most important feature. Also remember it inhibits glucagon release. So GLP-1 stimulates insulin secretion and inhibits the release of glucagon. Along with that, it delays gastric emptying, it reduces the food intake as well as it normalizes the fasting and postprandial insulin secretions. So these are all the actions of GLP-1. Now let us know about the GLP-1 receptor. The GLP-1 receptor is, it is a member of the glucagon receptor family and it is a GPCR or a G protein coupled receptor. It is a class B G protein coupled receptor. Now students we also have a detailed discussion on G protein coupled receptor. The link will be given in the description box. Please feel free to check it out. The GLP-1 was first cloned by Bernard Thorens. And this GLP-1 receptor it is found in the beta cell of the pancreas in the brain, in the heart and blood vessels, kidney, lung and the GI mucosa. Let us understand what is the action of GLP-1. Now students please remember that GLP-1 will be secreted only when the carbohydrate or rather only when the amount of glucose within the body is very high. So suppose we take a carbohydrate rich meal. Ultimately it will be broken down and the much more simpler component that is the glucose it will ultimately reach the small intestine. This high volume of glucose that is reaching the small intestine it is going to stimulate the incretins the release of the incretins. Now the incretins are basically GLP-1 and GIP. Now in case of humans GLP-1 is more sensitive also in case of diabetics also the GLP-1 is more sensitive than the GIP. 
so this glp1 it what it is going to do we have already discussed this glp1 is going to simulate the beta cells and hence there will be increase in the insulin secretion and also it is going to inhibit the beta uh, alpha cells and there will be decrease in the glucagon secretion so glp1 is increasing the insulin and decreasing the glucagon ultimately there will be decrease in the blood sugar level now if we have got an agonist then the agonist is going to act on the receptor of glp1 and this receptor will be activated and once this receptor gets activated then this receptor again due to the activation of this receptor it is going to increase the insulin and decrease the amount of glucagon ultimately there will be decrease in the blood sugar so this is how a glp1 receptor agonist is going to act now this incretins that is glp1 and gip they are inhibited by the enzyme dipeptidyl phosphatase 4 or dpp4 and we have got a group of drugs which inhibits this dpp4 and these are known as gliptins now we have got a detailed lecture on gliptins the link will be given in the description box please feel free to check it out now coming on to the glp receptor 1 agonist the glp receptor it is located in the cell membrane of the beta cells of the pancreas so once this glp1 the ligand glp1 once glp1 is released this glp1 it is going to bind to its receptor and once glp1 binds to the receptor then this receptor will be activated right there will be activation of the receptor now we already know that glp1 receptor is a g protein coupled receptor and there must be a second messenger then then once the receptor is stimulated it is going to stimulate adenylate cyclase and ultimately there will be increased formation of cyclic amp this cyclic amp is going to act as the second messenger and due to this cyclic amp all the other activities or rather all the activities of glp1 receptor is going to happen that is ultimately there will be increase in insulin there will be decrease in glucagon and due to these effects ultimately there will be decrease in the blood sugar level so this effect that is the decrease in the blood sugar level due to increase insulin and decrease glucagon that is happening secondary to the formation of cyclic amp because i've already told you that this cyclic amp is going to act as the second messenger now one thing students you also know that the glp1 it is degraded by the enzyme dpp4 so if we want to make a agonist for glp1 receptor then it must be, then it must be dpp4 resistant so this glp1 receptors agonist they are dpp4 resistant hence they cannot be degraded by dpp4 another very important point students please remember mcqs may be asked from this these glp1 receptor agonist they are not given to patients who have medullary carcinoma of the thyroid the reason for this is unknown but please remember this statement now the drugs that are used for uh, this glp1 receptor agonist they are divided into two groups the first group is the one that has got human glp1 backbone and the second group is the one that has got a exendin 4 backbone the drugs that have human glp1 backbone they are dulaglutide albiglutide liraglutide and semaglutide the drugs that have got an exendin 4 backbone they are exenatide and lixisenatide now this exenatide it has got two formulations what are the formulations that we are going to discuss now now students two very very important points about glp1 receptor agonist the first point is 
all the GLP-1 receptor agonists, they cause weight loss to the patient. In clinical trials, it has been seen that the patients lose 3 to 5 kg of their body weight over 4 to 6 months. The second point is that the GLP-1 receptor agonists, they decrease the chances of cardiovascular deaths. Hence, the GLP-1 receptor agonist is recommended for patients who have got diabetes mellitus and are at a high risk of developing cardiovascular diseases. Now, both these points are extremely important from your competitive exams MCQ point of view. Please remember these two. Let us discuss some of the very important features of the drugs. The first drug that we are going to discuss is exenatide. Now this exenatide, it has been approved as monotherapy as well as an adjunctive therapy for patients with type 2 diabetes who have not achieved their glycemic target with other drugs. These drugs, they decrease the level of HbA1c and there are two formulations. The first formulation is given twice daily and the second formulation is given once weekly. Now the once weekly formulation of exenatide, it is actually an extended release form and the drug is embedded within a biodegradable polymer or rather it is kept within a biodegradable polymer. Now, since it is kept within a biodegradable polymer, the absorption of the drug into the circulation is delayed. That is less amount of drug reaches the circulation. And naturally, the T half of the drug is going to increase. Hence, this drug, the extended release form, it can be given once weekly. Now the normal form of the drug of exenatide, it has a plasma T half of 3 hours and the duration of action is 6 to 10 hours. Hence this drug is given twice daily. The most important adverse effect of exenatide is nausea and vomiting. Another very very important point about exenatide it is contraindicated in patients who have got moderate to severe renal failure. That is in patients whose creatinine clearance is less than 30 ml per minute. Please remember this. This is also very important for your MCQs. The next drug that we are going to discuss is liraglutide. Now remember that liraglutide, it is a long act GLP-1 agonist and why is it long acting? It is long acting because it has a fatty acid side chain and due to the presence of this fatty acid side chain, there is delayed absorption of this drug from the subcutaneous space into the circulation and also this presence of this fatty acid chain, it helps in binding of the drug to the albumin and other plasma proteins. Hence, the free drug that is available in the circulation is also reduced. Due so, due to these two points which are occurring because of the presence of the fatty acid side chain, liraglutide is a long acting GLP-1 agonist. The T half of this drug is approximately 13 hours and it can be given once daily. Now, in case of liraglutide also, nausea and diarrhea, they are frequent adverse effects. Now both in for exanitide as well as liraglutide, even to be very honest with most of the GLP-1 receptor agonist, hypoglycemia with monotherapy of the drug that is only with this drug, hypoglycemia is very rare. Hypoglycemia does occur specially when the patient is given sulfonyl ureas. In that case, the chances of hypoglycemia is going to increase. 
but another very important point about liraglutide is that it increases the risk of gall bladder disease so this is a very very important point that liraglutide increases the risk of gall bladder disease next is dulaglutide dulaglutide is a fusion protein in this there are two molecules of a modified version of glp1 that is linked to the fc portion of the human immunoglobulin and the t half is approximately 5 days so it has a very high t half naturally this drug is given once weekly next drug is lixisenatide now this lixisenatide it is a modified form of exendrin 4 we have already discussed the plasma t half of this drug is 2 hours lixisenatide is the least potent glp1 receptor agonist another very very important point for you to remember and a, maybe a future mcq the least potent GLP-1 receptor agonist is lixisenatide. This lixisenatide is also contraindicated in patients with moderate to severe renal failure. That is in patients whose creatinine clearance is less than 30 ml per minute. And the last drug for today is semaglutide. Now semaglutide it is also a long acting drug. The T half is seven days. and it is long acting because it is very tightly bound with albumin hence the free drug available for absorption into the circulation is very low naturally it is given once weekly most important point again please remember the most potent glp1 receptor agonist is semaglutide semaglutide also increases the risk of gall bladder disease that's it for today if you like the video then give it a thumbs up also share it do let us know down in the comments below what other topic you would like us to discuss and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos we'll meet again with more contents like this until next time goodbye and take care